Each teacher has their own unique ideas for how to create optimal classroom conditions. And there are a variety of equally valid ways to foster productive learning environments. Communicating your specific ideas to students is called setting expectations. And expectations are important. They help students stay focused on learning. But sometimes, expectations will go unmet. This happens either because your students weren't clear about or forgot what you expect of them, or they were testing a boundary. That's normal. People will always try to figure out if a rule is really a rule. When minor misbehavior happens in your classroom, the one choice that we don't think should ever be an option for you is to ignore it. Doing so messages to students that an expectation isn't really important to you. If you do decide to address that behavior later, it will create confusion and potentially conflict. And who could blame this student for feeling unfairly singled out? The temptation to ignore minor misbehavior is strong. Responding can feel like unnecessary confrontation or divert your attention from the lesson. These are entirely legitimate concerns, but if you abide by two guidelines for how to respond in such moments, you can avoid both scenarios. First, be completely consistent in enforcing expectations. If reacting to an unmet expectation is totally predictable, kids won't feel taken by surprise or picked on. Consistency takes commitment. It's much easier to start from day one than to attempt a class-wide reset partway through the year. It also takes energy, but it's worth it. If students fully expect you to respond in an unsurprising way, it will all feel like business as usual. There's also an emotional element to consistency. The way in which you respond to misbehavior, in your body language, your voice, and your words, should also be unfluctuating. It looks like this. You've got good posture, you're squared up to the student being addressed, and you're making steady eye contact with a neutral or positive expression. You're not yelling, but your voice is decisive and it fills the room. And your words are formal and concise. Second, be automatic. If you've committed to muscle memory what to do and say in those common moments of minor misbehavior, you can save your concentration for what really matters, the lesson. After all, Teachers need to protect most of their brain power for in-the-moment judgment and creativity. If you're not experienced at managing small potatoes misbehavior, it will divert too much of your attention from the lesson. But with practice, you'll be able to manage minor distractions without losing focus on the flow of the lesson. We think creating flashcards is helpful. On one side, write a common misbehavior. On the other, write down precisely what you'll do and say in response to it. Throw in a bathroom mirror, and you've got a solid practice and feedback loop. If you're lucky, you also have an instructional coach who can help you refine these moves. Oh, and one more thing. Being consistent and automatic doesn't mean being a disciplinary robot. Let's say one of your expectations is that students stay seated during independent practice. But when you say, take a handout and pass on the rest, Melissa stands up to start handing out the papers. A teacher bot would chastise her for being out of her seat when she shouldn't be. But from her perspective, you just chewed her out for trying to help. This can create justifiable frustration and resentment. In these cases, you should still address the misunderstanding. That's being consistent. But if you acknowledge that the student's intentions were good, it allows you to clarify the expectation without eroding trust. Remember, consistency will create a good learning environment and help you be fair and develop good relationships. Automaticity will help you devote most of your attention to learning. And being compassionate and assuming best intentions? Well, that'll keep you human.